What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Draft to Glory. In the last episode, we again didn't win the draft, we lost in the final. That's now two of the last three drafts that we didn't win. And uh, I spoke about it in the two episodes ago, how when I don't win a draft, I feel an insane amount of pressure to try and win the next draft. So I'm feeling that pressure right now, guys. Hopefully we're going to go out and have a good draft here. If you guys could drop a thumbs up, I would appreciate it heavily. Um, what I might do here today, guys, is do a themed draft anyway. Uh, you guys, I've seen in the comment section a lot of people asking for themed drafts. So based on our five captains, we'll take a nation and go for... Okay, so let's go for a Brazilian theme. And we'll also take Ronaldinho Prime, which is phenomenal. Obviously, we've got the Messi up there as well. But yeah, we'll take every single Brazilian that we see... We shall take and we shall start as long as they're fitting in like for chemistry and such. But we're going to go for a Brazil national theme draft here today. And what a great way to start with Ronaldinho. I don't know if Ronaldo is um, as a player here. Uh, he's not. So um, no Brazilians here. We get a, the, the pick of the bunch. And I think I'll go with Karen Benzema because if we do get no Brazilians at the right wing spot, we do get a Brazilian. We get Lucas. So... We'll take Lucas. That's a shame as well because we could take Dybala or Eden Hazard there. Both would be um, really good players. But we'll take that uh, Lucas. Now, obviously, when I do theme drafts, I'm less likely to win the draft, right? Because I'm, I'm, I will be missing players that would potentially be better. Um, that's not a bad pick, that Taliso right there. He gets a soft link into Karim Benzema, so I'll take that right there, and that Toliso card is actually a good card. So we've got a French draft going on here, actually. This, I mean, this is I might as well take the Frenchman as well um, because he gets that link to uh, he gets that link to Lucas as well. So we're going more French themed than we are Brazilian themed at this point. Um, I don't I don't really care for Parejo. We'll take Jorginho there. Uh, we'll swap those two around, and we'll swap those two around. That pops us up to forty six chemistry. Not so bad. And so far we've got. Three Frenchmen and only two Brazilians. So Felipe Luis or Marcelo here would be ideal. No doing. Do I go for more French? I mean, I do. I might. I might as well. We might as well like. May, maybe this will be a French theme draft. I don't even know. Uh, well, there's no French or Brazilian here. We could take Lorente. Not a bad card. We could take Chester. Also, not a bad card. Decent defending and physical. Good pace. Um, we'll go with Chester there. We actually got perfect link in there too. Uh, so we'll go with the Welshman. Next up, there's our there's our next Brazilian. So we get Marquinhos. He's got an anchor chem style as well. So that's pretty decent. And he gets a soft link into Fekir, which is great. Now, if we could get Danny Alves here or a Danilo. Perfect. So he's got shadow card too. So that, that's all right. I mean, so far we've got, what, one, two, three, four Brazilians so far. Uh, we're still nearly married up there with the uh, with the French guys too. Um, so Stegen doesn't actually fit. Handanovic doesn't actually fit. Um... Well, none, none of these work. So we'll take to Stegen because there's a German from the La Liga. He's got more of an opportunity to get linked. Uh, so that's our first uh, our first 11. Moving into the next section. Now, Mbappe would be a good card to take just because he gets strong links all round. Strong link to Fekir. Strong link to Lucas. Soft link into Benzema. Maybe we'll go for like a French-Brazil hybrid. I mean, that, that probably is more reasonable that we take all the, either the French or the Brazilians. Now, we don't have a French or a Brazilian here. We have Milinkovic-Savic, that is a great card. So, we might as well take him. Uh, we'll see what we do with Mbappe. We'll see what we do with the Frenchman. We'll see how it goes for the rest of the uh, the theme here. Could obviously take another Frenchman here. So, we'll take Andre. And with a shadow card, he's all right, man. Like, gets good pace, good defending, well-rounded stats outside of that. For a 77-rated card, he's actually okay. Um... I know Mbappe here would give us a nice big boost on chemistry. That would obviously lose some links there. And then the Frenchman also gives us a nice big strong link on chemistry as well. Um, how many Frenchmen have we got? One, two, three, four, five. We've actually got six French. And one, two, three, four Brazilian. Maybe we go for a French national draft then. I could have taken Koscielny as well, which absolutely sucks. It would have been good to have him. Uh, we're taking Signe for a good sub right there. Let's see what we get next on the list. No French, no Brazilian again. I mean, they're not they're not popping up for us, are they? We'll take Delafoe. It's actually a good card, that Delafoe card. Good pace, good dribbling, terrible shooting and such. But um, now would be a good time to get a Brazilian goalkeeper. Or a French goalkeeper. 
Yeah, you know what? I think we're going for French. I think we're going for a French national team here. We should be able to fill out the whole whole eleven. Um, and Titi is perfect for it as well. Okay, so we are one, two, three, four, five, six. We're seven, eight Frenchmen so far, and three Brazilians. So we've actually got a full France slash Brazil hybrid going on here, which I am absolutely fan just fine with. I'm going to take that Cesar as Pilaqueta. Even though it doesn't link to anyone, he'll be a good sub for us. And again, the team isn't great. Uh, what do we get here? There's another Brazilian. So we'll take Paulinho. Paulinho loses us way loads of chem. So maybe we don't even start him. Maybe we just keep going for the France team. Anthony Martial works as well. Do we do we put Anthony Martial up, up at left wing and play Ronaldinho as a sub? We're not going to get a full French eleven. No, that's tricky. Because that Ronaldo would be good up front, although he won't even fit. Neymar as well. Um, if we went back to Brazil. Let's, take the, let's, let's just keep going Brazil and France. We'll have a full bench and a full squad of France and Brazil. Now, Nkudu's okay, but I already got the midfield, the attack, and most of the defence covered. It's literally just the right back and the right centre back that's an issue. So we'll take uh, Makedo here, who I'd actually probably prefer in at right back, to... Uh, Danilo um, and there we go I'm actually I'm, I'm quite content with that guys to be perfectly honest we've got a very very strong uh, lineup we've got five Brazilians now on the bench Ronaldinho Paulinho and I, I could start I could play more Brazilians we'll put Paulinho in there and we'll put Danilo at left back I mean Let's, let's stay with France. It will be a French and Brazil hybrid. There will only be French or Brazilian in the starting lineup. Um, and we've got a great bench. And in fact, I'll only use the French and Brazilians on the bench as well. Lucas, Paulinho, Martial, Neymar and Danilo will be the only subs we use. And we'll literally keep that France-Brazil link. So we've got Makedo at right back, uh, which is a decent card. Um, good physical, good pace. Obviously not the greatest defensive stats, but he's got an anchor chem style, which does help. We've got uh, Marquinhos with an anchor, which is good. Um, Loris is good, and Titi with an anchor is good. Armavi is good. Uh, Fekir is okay. Tolisso is very good. This guy, I quite like this Andre guy. Uh, we then got Mbappe, Benzema, and Ronaldinho up front. It's a good squad. And then we can just bring on, um, you know, Neymar for, I don't know, Fekir. I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, wait, we get more... More, more links there. Why didn't you guys tell me that that exists? We're now up to 97 chemistry. That's even better. That's perfect, in fact. Uh, if we could get a French manager, of course we can't. Why would we? 97 there. 99 with Liga Santander. 97 there. 98 with the Premier League. 99. So we'll take the Liga Santander manager. Um, I, I, I like this squad. I actually don't expect much out of this squad either because we, it is pretty weak for many areas. Left back and right back are terrible. The midfield is a bit weak. The attack is fantastic. So we're going to have to work hard to try and get far in this draft. But that, guys, is the squad. Let's get into the action. Okay, guys, as we go into the gameplay, the first opponent we come up against has got a 5 2 2 1 team, 84k, 85 rated. Not a great team. Um, you know, Milinkovic, Savic, uh, Loris, Varane, Messi. And Delafoe are pretty much the only even good players, you know. And, and Makoke is okay, but Koke is okay. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, but yeah, this wasn't a great team, and, and it wasn't a great player to marry with that great, you know, not great team either. Fakir there getting a very easy goal after one minute, and then Fakir again doing some good work, just dribbling, walking around this guy. You can see he's already lunging in for tackles. Beautiful finish there to make it 2-0 after just 7 minutes. And then the third goal on 20 minutes from Ronaldinho from a free kick. Whips that one around the wall in off the post. Made it 3-0. And my opponent decided at that point that that was enough. So a nice easy rage quit into the second round. Obviously the, a team that I've got like this is, is going to be tricky, right? Because it, it could go either way. You know, I'm a good player with a, uh, an okay team. 
Uh, we come up against a really strong Premier League squad, or mostly Premier League squad in the second round. You know, that Nacho team of the year, Ramos, uh, centre-back pairing is fantastic. The team in general is very, very meta. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a tricky team for me because the two fullbacks are so bad. Uh, the centre-backs aren't great. Like, there's so much wrong with the team that I've built. Uh, we end up getting the first goal in this game. Should have probably scored right there, but end up getting the second goal. Taliso off the post uh, first initially, then off the bar from Toliso to make it 1-0. My opponent did make it 1-1, and I always get uh, uh, asked, you know, sometimes why do I celebrate the way I celebrate? And that's because usually it's, it comes from something that somebody's done. Like, this guy scored to make it 1-1 and run away, giving me the can you hear me celebration with Gabriel Jesus. So, you know, obviously the antagonizing was set up there. And so after that, I, I carried on where he left off kind of thing. I ended up getting myself uh, a goal with Fekir again there. Benzema doing the only bit of work he did the entire draft in that one little section. And so there from that, you know, from that point onwards, that was me also giving the antagonistic uh, celebrations. And it doesn't always happen from a goal celebration or from any one thing in particular. Sometimes it can come from somebody just pausing it for the sake of pausing it to waste time. You know, there have been times where I've been two goals up or three goals up and then the opponent will just pause it in the 70th minute and wait for the timer to go out and then pause it and wait for the timer to go out and then pause it and wait till the timer to go out. So if I then manage to score again, I'll, I'll antagonise back. Sometimes it's uh, due to somebody watching the cutscenes and the replay and all the celebrations and all sorts. And don't get me wrong, I know there are instances where sometimes, you know, they go to the bathroom real quick or they go get a drink or, the, you know, they're texting on their phone. It's not always like, you know, it's not always with malice that people are doing things. But you just, you get a general feel for it. And, and that, that's, that's how I, I retaliate, essentially. You know, I retaliate by the way somebody acts in the game by reacting myself through celebrations. And sometimes it comes back to haunt me. Uh, there was a game on Foot Champs this weekend where I was 5-3 up and I ran to the halfway line and I shushed him and I dabbed him and I ended up losing 6-5. Sometimes karma comes around to get you, you know. Um, but we end up winning this game 6-3 after a really strong performance, guys. So a good, solid performance. We go into the semi-finals. After a fantastic set of goals from Neymar, uh, specifically. I thought Neymar was very, very good. He came on and he was uh, the... the a breath of fresh air in this team, actually, because Benzema was absolutely tragic. And in the semi-final, we come up against one of the best drafts I have ever seen. Uh, 94 Neymar, 95 Ronaldo, three team of the years, informed Ter Stegen, uh, the path to glory Carver Howe, although that's just his base version, the informed Bacambu that is actually very, very good, informed Casemiro, Asensio and David Luiz. And I, I just looked at that team and I thought to myself, based on his team and based on my team, even if this guy is a, a, you know, not a great player, this is still going to be a very difficult game. And it was that was just the truth of it. Because his team is just so good. Like Modric there just banging that one from the top of the box, a rocket to the back post and in the back of the net. You know, and if it was just a regular midfielder that he had there, that's not a goal. He then scores from the corner, very similar to my first goal. Lovely little bit of work with Neymar there. Gets headed to the, sorry, across to the back post and David Luiz is there to head that one home. You know, I'm... I'm uh, I'm, I'm not downfall with myself in many situations because it was me that really helped popularize that back post cross Although I, I saw it initially from Mo Aubameyang, you know, I started doing it I showcased it in videos and now so many people do it and then a near post corner really caught me off as well You know and, and this just comes from his team being so good, you know, perfect set pieces perfect headers uh, Just just good goals all round so 4-1 down with 12 minutes to go I'm thinking to myself, you know, th this this was a good effort, but hey sometimes you don't always win but as with always with draft, you always have a chance in draft. You could be three goals down with 12 minutes to go and you could still have a chance. It took me 10 minutes to make it back to 4-3, guys. I get the ball in here with Anthony Martial. Martial sidesteps the defender, gets into the space, cuts that back to Fekir. The rebound falls to Neymar, who slots that one home. However, sadly, I uh, was unable to get the fourth goal and really get back into this game. My opponent was a good player. I take nothing away from him and he had an exceptional team. Um, and he ended up being the better man on the day, you know. I don't mind losing to a guy like that with a team like that. Hold my hands up high and just say, yeah, well done, dude. He just he just outplayed me on the day. I did have a few extra chances in him and from good areas, but I was unable to take my chances, whereas he was able to capitalise on his. So that, guys, is going to be the end of the gameplay. And let's get into the packs. So, guys, we end up losing in the semi-final. That is part and parcel of the theme drafts. Uh, it's just a struggle in some games. That The guy that I lost to in the semi-final had the most insane team. Um, and he really capitalised on it, uh, you know, um, mostly with that Ronaldo header at the near post. I felt, I felt like the penalty was a bit harsh, you know, the keeper came out and the keeper made the challenge. It's not me that made that, but definitely the, the, the lack of ability in both the fullbacks was problematic. 
Um, Fekir was okay, but not amazing. He had an amazing first game, but he was terrible. This guy, Andre, wasn't great. And of all of the players, the most surprisingly terrible player was Benzema. He was useless. I, I don't even mean, oh, he might have been all right, but probably a little bit useless. No, no, he was useless. I don't even think he scored a single goal the entire draft. Um, so that is obviously one of the downsides to having themed drafts. You know, we wouldn't have had this team uh, had we not had a themed draft. Um, Neymar came on and made a good impact. Uh, Martial came on in one game and made a decent impact too. Uh, I could have actually got more chemistry by playing Ter Stegen as well. I, re I do, I'm sure you guys were seeing that at the start. I know that Ter Stegen would have given Mtiti full chem and would have got full chem himself, but that would have then de defeated the purpose of the themed draft. Um, but to get to the semi-final was okay. I, I didn't expect much at all out of out of this. And uh, you know, bear in mind uh, we've had a great run of draft. We've done lots and lots and lots of uh, good things over the last sort of thirty to thirty-five episodes. We've got an insane draft record. You're now going to see this uh, now that we're moving into a theme draft section because I will do theme drafts now until team of the season. I think so. Uh, about three or four weeks full of theme drafts. You're going to see this record just deplete. It's just going to deteriorate massively. You know, we're going to start losing in the second and third round a hell of a lot more than we did before. Um, but I think it'll be fun to try out new players, you know, it'll be pretty, pretty cool. Of course, we could still make profit, that's the main aim here. We probably got about 2,000 match coins on this one. We get a Jumbo Premium Gold Pack and a Premium Gold Players Pack. That's actually a really good set of rewards for losing into the semi-final. We'll start with the Jumbo Premium Gold Pack. A board player is all I'm asking for, nothing more than that. We don't get a board player, we get only two shiny players. Okay, so now I'm asking for... A um, ironic that we get a Frenchman. I'm asking for a, sh a shine. Uh, sorry, a, a shadow hunter or centre forward to cam card tucked away in this pack somewhere, just to give us a nice big boost because our players in this in this pack are not great. In fact, they're far, far, far worse than that. A couple of fitness cards, which is nice. Um, a left mid to left wing, which is a bit meh. Okay, so bad, bad start. I mean, we probably made about eight thousand coins. Eight thousand. That many players, maybe maybe like four thousand coins. Now there was a lot of players in there. Maybe about four or five k off of that pack altogether. A couple of fitness cards as well. Now I, th I think my initial uh, guess of eight thousand was probably a more accurate guess actually. Uh, so we might have broken even off of this draft. We're going to get Nyema here as our uh, next player, an eighty-one rated. Again, just my pack luck not actually very good ever in FIFA. We get Izquierdo and Rudiaz. Um, sadly, we get a couple of. Uh, Silver's in the pack as well. I mean, you know, I mean, this guy's worth over a thousand coins, so that's a good start. Um, bottom line is, I feel like we at the very least broke even here, so I'm content with breaking even. We might have made a small profit if I sell these players when they're relevant to sell. But that was a France and Brazil themed national team draft. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We're going to have plenty more drafts to come and plenty more themed drafts to come. So that, guys, is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.